Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Cents, where I cover non-crypto related topics such as pop culture, sports, finance, science, and automotive. And guys, today we are rocking out to some Lloyd Banks, started up from the 2000s. Lloyd Banks, man, where's that guy at, man? Seems like a waste of talent, man. He was a very good rapper. Not sure what happened to him and the G-Unit crew. But what's good, people? Hope you guys are doing well, and welcome to another episode of My Two Cents. And today, um, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, Lyft has jumped out there ahead of Uber and announced that they're actually going to be uh, preparing for an IPO. So we're going to take a look at um, an, an article that if you have heard about the IPO, maybe you didn't hear what they're potentially doing for early drivers. Some of the first drivers for Lyft may be getting a nice windfall, a nice payday from this IPO. So we're going to take a look at this article out of, I believe, Market Watch that kind of goes over that. I thought it was a very uh, great article and it's good to see some of these companies that make so much money from IPOs start to give back. And so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that one. It's again out of Market Watch and it says here, hail to the OG Uber and Lyft drivers in line to cash in on the highly anticipated IPOs. So it's, this guy here is one of the OG Lyft drivers. He looks like T Payne's cousin or something. But this guy may be getting a nice windfall here. It says here at Lyft they were called the OGs. This iteration of the original gang comprised the first 50 or so drivers who took a chance on what may then have sounded like a crazy concept. Now as Lyft and rival Uber Technologies gear up for the transition from startup to public company, both are considering giving some of their loyal drivers a chance to buy stocks in their initial public offering. And this was first reported by the Wall Street Journal. Lyft filed its prospectus for an initial public offering on Friday. Both companies have revealed that they plan to go public this year. In San Francisco, drivers who helped build these ride-sharing empires include a former personal caregiver, a former security guard, and a former Credit Suisse investment banker. The companies haven't said how they'd select the lucky drivers, but they likely would focus on longtime active drivers. And at Lyft, the plan is to award drivers who have logged at least 10,000 rides, according to the report. Lyft and Uber have not responded to Market Watch requests for comments. Carlo Garabe was a private caregiver in Silicon Valley in 2012 when he first heard of Lyft. He had a two year old son and figured he could use the flexible hours. At the time, there were no more than 20 employees at Lyft and co-founders Logan Green and John Zimmer interviewed potential drivers. Garibay said that Zimmer interviewed him and at first he thought it was very sketchy because he found an ad on Craigslist and it said something like control your hours and get paid every week. Garibay, who lives in Hercules, California with his wife and now two children, and drives a hybrid 2019 Acura MDX. The driver estimates that he's given more than 20,000 Lyft and Uber rides. He started driving for Uber too in 2013. If given a chance, he would hold on to his shares rather than cash them out, he said. He says, I'd rather have the shares for both companies as a security blanket long term. Cash on hand is easy to spend. Deco Carter, who was a security guard in the Mission District in San Francisco in 2013, when he decided on a career change, a friend had told him about Lyft. He says, I had never heard of the startup before. At the time, it wasn't a term you would hear very much. He donned a suit for his interview, only to arrive at a small office that Lyft shared with another startup and noticed that everyone was dressed in jeans and t-shirts. He said, I didn't know if that was a company or just some people trying to get something going. He and other candidates were looking at each other saying, have you heard of this? The company gave him a giant pink mustache, Lyft's symbol at the time, along with a bag of candy for passengers and a phone charger, Carter said. Carter, a San Francisco resident who is regularly called a Lyft legend by fellow drivers and drives a hip-hop themed 2006 Toyota Skyon XB for Lyft and Lyft alone. I'd definitely go for the shares, he says, if I had a choice, and put it away for the kids. He said it's paycheck to paycheck for his family, and Carter doesn't have much experience or interest in the stock market. That's not my area at all, he says. 
His wheelhouse, he said, is creating a fun learning atmosphere about hip-hop for his passengers to enjoy on his rides. Keith Maddock, a self-described car guy to the core, started driving for Lyft and shortly after for Uber in 2013. He had worked for Credit Suisse in San Francisco and enjoyed the technical aspects of his investment banking job, but past his associate years was finding the sales role was not something he enjoyed long term. He left the job of four years with a nice little buffer. He says, after two weeks of watching Netflix, I was bored and thinking I've got to do something, he said. I thought, why not try the pink mustache thing for a couple of weeks? He figured he'd meet people he would never meet otherwise, make some beer money, and drive cars. At his most active, he drove 80 hours a week. It was a lot of hustle, he says. Maddock, who lives in San Francisco, still uses the Lyft and Uber apps occasionally, but mostly to fill the gaps in his own limousine service. He said it's going to be a safe bet about the IPO. Even if a driver needs the money immediately, they could hold on to half of it for a few years or months, sell it at a profit, and keep the other half as long-term investment. Access to the IPOs for drivers would be huge, a way to get in on a hot new stock market issue without having to be a friend of Frank. Maddox said, alluding to Frank Quatron, prominent Silicon Valley banker who took public Amazon, Cisco Systems, and other heavyweights in the 1990s tech boom. Quatron was sidelined by a conviction for obstruction of justice, later overturned in connection with an investigation into how Credit Suisse first Boston allocated IPO shares. With so many drivers, the amount they can earn has dwindled. The hours can still be grueling, but all three men said they appreciate what Lyft and Uber may do for them in the future. Man, I surely hope that they do uh, look out for the OG drivers, the ones that really got uh, Uber and Lyft going. If, if it weren't for them, uh, if it weren't for them taking the risk, um, talking about the drivers to to do this, Lyft and Uber wouldn't be where they are today. So I think they definitely should look out for those drivers. Uh, as the article said, you know they don't make much money uh, or as much as they used to. So you're really um, fighting for the same pool of uh, individuals or customers, I should say. But hey, I think this is a way to give back. What do you guys think? What criteria should it be for you to really participate in the IPO for Lyft. I think Uber is, is ponying up, trying to get their whole perspectives and do their IPO run um, before the pre-IPO run, before they do the IPO. But it looks like Lyft jumped out there and uh, did it first. So some people feel like, you know, IPO is, is it kind of marks the end of the culture for, um, for those companies that do go IPO. I mean, you're kind of surrendering a lot of the direction, decision making and all that to the shareholders. You know, a lot of things change when you go public. So it's just going to be interesting to see if if anything changes for Lyft and Uber. And again, you know, to me, when companies go public, it's like the end of the road as far as growth, especially for like the unicorn ones that go public like I like Lyft and Uber. Now, if you're talking about something under the radar like Amazon where you know, was really under the radar when they went IPO and, you know, slow growth. And then, boom, they finally, you know, made it big. And then the market had to adjust for that. That's different. But when you have these ones that are real hot, real popular, I, I would stay away from them. I'm just going to be honest with you. You guys let me know your thoughts on this Uber, Lyft, possibly. It's no guarantee. Huh? We didn't see anything in here that said that they were doing it, but it's a possibility. I think it's it's being talked about within uh, Lyft organization. Is this a good idea for them to give them some stocks? It doesn't even look like they can, they're going to give them any. They're just going to allow them to participate. You know, really what I want to know from you guys is what should the criteria be? Because I'm just thinking, I personally think it should be based on when you started driving for Lyft or Uber. It shouldn't be how many rides you've done um, or maybe a, a mixture of those. You guys let me know. Me personally, I think if you were driving for Uber or Lyft the first six months, you should definitely get some type of compensation via a, a stock equity uh, from the IPO. I'm just saying, I mean, at least be able to participate. So we'll see what happens. You guys definitely let me know. Interesting, interesting article, though. So you guys let me know 
your thoughts on that. And again, the song for today is by Lloyd Banks. Start it up. It's your boy Crypto Blood. That's my two cents for today. I'm out of here, people. Holla.